I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. Hello there. The highest levels are involved in the conspiracy. Nancy Pelosi is Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine. We must be the great arsenal of democracy. 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 I love democracy. democracy. All who gain power are afraid to lose it. Fear. 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 We'll keep the local systems in line. Line. Truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. Point of view. Welcome to the Conspiracy and the Force podcast. Star Wars, conspiracies, and more. With your host, me, Conspiracy Kyle. Kyle. Rebellions are built on hope. Hope. For God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Darkness. As long as there's light, 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 we got a chance. 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 This is what Luke says before he goes to the toilet. This is Red 5. I'm going in. Good morning. Sunday morning. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Conspiracy in the Force. I'm your host, Conspiracy Kyle. And this is part two of three in my series called Palpatine Parallels. On the first episode, we covered Abraham Lincoln. And on this episode, we will cover a more recent president that, unlike Lincoln, was not universally loved, but was and is still a very polarizing figure. Now, before we get into him and who he is, let's lay some Star Wars groundwork. And since we're going to be talking about a controversial president, oh, what the heck. Why don't we talk a bit about the controversial sequel trilogy? Many apologies. Apologies. Now let's start at the beginning. Palpatine emerged in the prequels as a galactic senator with big hopes and dreams for helping to fix the galaxy. When he became chancellor, the galaxy became embroiled in a civil war, which ended with him wielding executive powers to consolidate control, and he eventually became the emperor of the universe. Now, his intention was to rule forever through Sith dark side magic, but that was thwarted when Luke sacrificed himself to save his father, and his father in turn killed Palpatine. Or so we thought. Thought. Now, on to the sequels. Sorry in advance. So, Palpatine reappeared in the sequel trilogy at the beginning of Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Apparently, he had been sending messages out to the galaxy that he had returned, and Kylo Ren was trying to find his way to him. Kylo soon found Palpatine, and Palpatine was not looking well. As you recall, he supposedly died at the end of Return of the Jedi. The gross-looking form that you now saw was a lesser form of the great evil he once was. He told Kylo that the time had come for the Sith to rule the galaxy again, and how he had been the one who created Snoke, the also gross-looking leader of the First Order, who Kylo had been subservient to, until he decided to kill him in The Last Jedi, the worst Star Wars movie ever made. Ever made. Ever made. As the story progresses, you find out that Rey is the granddaughter of Palpatine, and so on and so forth, and then Palpatine is defeated ultimately. But let's go back to his apparent death and resurrection. How is this possible? Did he finally figure out the way to immortality that his master Darth Plagueis wasn't even able to realize? This is where the cult called the Sith Eternal come in. So let's read an excerpt from the Rise of Skywalker novelization, which replays some events from Palpatine's supposed death to the creature that it becomes 30 years later. This is a vision to Rey. Quote, Falling, falling, falling. Down a massive shaft, the betrayal sharp and stinging, a figure high above, black clad and helmeted and shrinking fast. His very own apprentice had turned against him, the way he himself had turned against Plagueis, 
whose secret to immortality he had stolen. Palpatine had not acted fast enough in the moment of his own death. But Sidious, sensing the flickering light in his apprentice, had been ready for years. So the falling, dying Emperor called on all the dark power of the Force to thrust his consciousness far, far away to a secret place he had been preparing. His body was dead, an empty vessel, long before it found the bottom of the shaft, and his mind jolted to new awareness in a new body. A painful one, a temporary one. It was too soon. The secret place had not completed its preparations. The transfer was imperfect, and the cloned body wasn't enough. Perhaps Plagueis was having the last laugh after all. Maybe his secret remained secret, because Palpatine was trapped in a broken, dying form. The heretics of the Sith Eternal toiled, splicing genes, bolstering tissue, creating unnatural abominations, in the hope that any one of these strand casts would succeed and become a worthy receptacle. The heretics would do anything, risk anything, sacrifice anything, to create a cradle for their god consciousness. End quote. End quote. End quote. So, as Poe Dameron famously said in the movie, somehow Palpatine returned. And it's a very convoluted tale. But let's do a quick recap on the key points surrounding Palpatine. Number one, Palpatine was seen as a fresh start for the galaxy, one who would rid the galaxy of corruption. Number two, he oversaw civil war and turmoil in the galaxy. Number three, Palpatine suffered a grievous fatal injury, ending his reign prematurely. And number four, Palpatine's supporters kept him alive to rule again one day. Now, there's a former U.S. president who seems to have followed the same path as Palpatine. Let's now talk about former president Donald John Trump. Trump. Now, full disclosure, I was once an ardent supporter of Trump. If you go back in the archives of this podcast, that will become self-evident. And this isn't something that I'm shying away from. I'm convinced that QAnon and documentaries that were eye-opening to me, like Fall of the Cabal and Out of Shadows, were propaganda meant to turn public perception towards Trump in his alleged upcoming takedown of the elites. However, I'm now convinced he's part of the system and not necessarily here to help us though he virtue signals that he is. I mean, look no further than the Vax rollout and his involvement in its rapid development through America through Operation Warp Speed. He's been a great salesperson for that thing that has not only caused physical harm and death to some, but has also been indirectly responsible for people losing their jobs over ridiculous vaccine mandates. And also, he's a pure narcissist. Everything he does, he wants credit for, and to be viewed as a servant of the people when he's anything but... Now, going back to the key points about Palpatine, as you'll see, Trump aligns with these key points as well. Number one, Trump also, like Palpatine, was seen as a fresh start for our country, one who would drain the swamp of corruption in status quo politics. Now, Trump spoke constantly about corruption in the Clintons and every establishment politician who had done nothing for the people, but had benefited themselves. All these things were true, of course. Number two, Trump presided over a period of civil war and turmoil amongst the people. Now, true, there was much upheaval and pushback against its presidency, and we also saw the rise in BLM and other activist groups seeking to wedge a larger divide between the people of the United States, as Trump was as well. COVID also sought to further divide us and to isolate us. Now, one key difference between Trump and Palpatine is that the galactic civil war allowed Palpatine to remain in office and gain more power, while this didn't necessarily seem to happen with Trump. Number three, Trump also suffered a grievous injury, ending his reign prematurely. Now, mind you, this injury is a metaphorical one in terms of his loss in the 2020 election. In his eyes and the eyes of many, he was the victor of this election, but widespread voting fraud and manipulation caused his dementia-riddled opponent, Joe Biden, to win. Trump fully expected to win. Number four, Trump's supporters have kept him alive to hopefully rule again one day. Now, there are many ardent Trump supporters still, and I know because I have many friends and family that are. Some of them, not all, are still very convinced of his greatness and believe that he can help America return to its former glory. Just like the Sith Eternal piece Palpatine back together, the Trump fanatics continue to carry the torch for him with the hopes he will win in 2024. They overlook many of his flaws, his vaccine sales pitches, his narcissism, his shady business deals, because he is the conservative savior.
Some even hold him to a religious blasphemous level with pictures and memes that compare him to Jesus or that he is Jesus' chosen servant here on earth, which is disgusting. Disgusting. You know, interestingly enough, and we're not going to get too deep into this, but Palpatine and Trump do share a common trajectory with a biblical figure that you all may know, called the Beast, or the Antichrist, who also recovered from a grievous wound. Revelation 13.3 states that, quote, And I saw one of his heads as if it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the Beast. End quote. Yeah, yeah, here we go. I know what you're saying. Trump's the Antichrist, just like people said Obama was, and the Pope, yada, 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 and so many others throughout history. They're the Antichrist. He's the Antichrist. We've heard it all before. And yeah, it does sound crazy when you say it, so I'm not going to fall in line with it being true or not. It's just interesting to me. If you really want to go down the rabbit hole of Trump conspiracy, I would follow Donnie Darkened on Twitter. He does a lot of numerical analysis and other analysis that show that Trump could be the Antichrist. Could be right, could be wrong. In closing, I think it's important that we don't put our faith and trust in mortal leaders or political figures. And I know I've said this time and time again, but it's still true every time I say it. So many on the left want to look for a Hollywood hero or an activist hero, and the people on the right make fun of them. But then those on the right can be just as guilty of idol worship and celebrity worship as well. And those people that you worship will inevitably let you down every time. Just think everyone that followed Palpatine were doomed for disaster. Keep your hearts fixed on God for your salvation and true meaning in your life. Thank you for tuning in to Palpatine Parallels Part 2. On the third and final part, we will dive into a figure that you could consider political, but is a little bit much more than that, and much more global than Trump or Lincoln. We'll be analyzing the Pope in terms of his connections to Palpatine. May the Force be with you, and God bless. And God bless.